Hi, this is Ioni, and today let's talk about depression. Yeah, I'm gonna start with something deep. I'm not gonna fanny about, beat around the bush. I'm gonna start with something important because I feel like a lot of people suffer with depression in silence because they don't know who to talk to and they're ashamed about it and they just don't know how to deal with it. And the reason that I wanna talk about it is because I suffered with depression a lot when I was younger. I don't, rem I was sad a lot, more than sad, suicidal, and even tried to kill myself when I was younger. Yep, putting it out there on a video. Um, but something, miraculous happened about three years ago where I really started to work on myself and I really started to get to grips with my mind and my feelings and it changed everything. I had been on antidepressants, I'd had numerous counselling sessions and yet I would always just come back to this just feeling of what's the fucking point? Um, when I was suicidal, I don't think I would have actually, I don't know that I would have, maybe it was a cry for attention, even though I didn't really tell anybody. Um, I don't think I wanted to die. But then it got to a point where I just didn't care. Um, I wasn't going to kill myself because I thought it would be too devastating for my family. But I didn't care. I would often think, if I died today, I don't care. Like, who cares? It wouldn't be an issue. Um, and that's horrible. And I know that there's a lot, a lot of people out there, out there, who feel that way. So what I'm going to talk about today is why I think that we feel these things, um, and how I got over it, not completely, there's still times where I feel like shit, but how I got over that. Why do I think we get depressed? I am not a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a doctor or whatever, but I feel like there are people who deal with stresses and hardships and things and they experience that stress and they can move on from it and I have a lot of friends like that who are going through really tough times right now but I don't think they're depressed and then I think there are people who when stuff like that happens it takes a hold of your life in a way that you can't move past it it's like an ingrained it's like an ingrained state of like desperation and sadness which isn't as easy just to, to move over as, as a lot of people do. Why do I feel we feel that way? Firstly, I feel like it comes from the world we live in. We are constantly subjected to negativity, constantly. Um, with the news just bombards us with negative images and thoughts about the world around us. Um, Media and advertising is constantly telling us that unless we have this car or this house or this makeup or these clothes or have these kind of amazing experiences in life, then we're not a worthwhile human being. But unfortunately, those things are not what life's about and are not what makes us happy. Another reason is for, for why I feel like people get depressed is because we lack a purpose. If you wake up every day and there's no meaning for your day and you're going about your life with no purpose, with no motivation, with no goal, of course that's going to affect how you feel. For me, I, when I was sort of in the depths of my depression, a lot of it came from that feeling of you are never going to get anywhere. You are never going to make it. You will never be remembered, you will be a failure, and your life will be meaningless, and you'll have some mediocre existence where you just carry on living in this shit way. <laughs> that was my state of being for a very long time. Um, that's not a good frame of mind. So how did I deal with that? Well, I went to counselling, and I was on antidepressants, which were horrible, by the way horrible, horrible things that just, yeah, I, f I think I felt better, but I was just numb, I feel like. Um, I had no sex drive, which I think is not a good thing at all. Um, and when I drank, 
I became a monster. And I don't know if it was the antidepressants or just the fact that I wasn't in a good frame of mind, but drinking made me just become a completely other person. So I stopped taking those antidepressants, went to see another doctor who told me that actually you're on the wrong ones. You should have had ones for anxiety, not depression. And, and I just thought about it and I just think, doctors listen to you say stuff and they give you drugs that alter your brain and it's not as if it's an anesthetic where you know that if somebody has a certain size body mass if they've eaten a certain amount of food if you want to knock them out for a certain amount of time if they're allergic to a certain thing you give them this amount of of anesthetics whereas with antidepressants they listen to what you say and then just give you anything and that's affecting your brain so I um, am really strongly, strongly against antidepressants. And uh, I don't want to say I healed my depression without them. Um, but there are ways of dealing with depression that it does not involve taking those numbing drugs that shut off your feelings. Um, because feelings are important to, to, to feel alive. Having feelings is an important part of feeling alive, I think. So how did I deal with it? First of all, I stopped watching the news. We've spent years of our lives waking up in the morning, listening to the radio, listening to news or watching the TV, listening to all these bad things that have happened. And then we go about our day and then often at night time we come home, people come home and go and watch the nighttime news about all the horrors that are happening in the world. And then you go to sleep with that. Now, my thoughts on the news are, it's important to stop things like the Holocaust happening and it's important that news about what's happening in the world is being shared. But as a person, when you watch the news, do you ever do anything about it? How many times have you watched the news, been moved by something enough to go and do it? And I'm sure people have at some times, you may have donated to something and you know there are people who get a lot more involved than others, but I think the majority of us will watch the news and just go to bed And all we get from it is that the world is a really horrible negative place and everything is shit. So when I stopped watching the news, that just changed everything. So I urge you to try it for one week. Don't watch the news for a week. I promise you the world won't end. But I also promise you that you'll feel better. So first of all, just try that. Then it was the personal development. And through that, I learned a lot about myself. About three and a half years ago, I started a business and a heavy emphasis on that business was personal development. I don't really do the business anymore, but I am so grateful for it, for what it gave me, because it gave me the discipline to read books, personal development books about mindset and belief and attitude and work ethic and finances and all these things that just completely transformed my state of mind and my thinking. One of my favourite books in the whole entire planet is um, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Read it. It's very wordy and can be a little bit like heady sometimes. But the premise of it is, he talks a lot about the ego and I'm sure we've got our own interpretations of the ego but for me, the ego is that voice inside your head that tells you things about yourself. It tells you you're not good enough, or nobody likes you, or you'll never be happy, or nobody will ever love you, or that person doesn't like you, or it's, it's really, it can be really angry and nasty and aggressive. And it's, it's that voice, it's the part of you that always has to be right. If you're having an argument with somebody, it's that part that has to say, that has to keep fighting because you've got to have the last word because you've got to be right. It's that part of you that when you know somebody's wrong about something, you have to tell them that they're wrong because you're right. Um, That's the ego. And what I learned through The Power of Now is that that isn't me. And there's this one exercise in there where he says, think about what your next thought's going to be. And as you do that, while you're thinking, what's my next thought going to be? There's this quiet where there's, there's no thoughts. And that, and so basically it's, the ego is this chatter, that clutter that that consumes our mind 24 hours a day, apart from when we're sleeping. But it's realizing that under that ego, that 
crazy voice. That is who you are. That is you. Uh, getting a little bit out there, bear with me. Bear with me, people. Once you can understand that, you can start to control the voice and the ego. Another crucial point, part of the power of now, which I forgot to say, is that um, a lot of the times people are always thinking about things that happened with the past and they feel shame and regret and anger and bitterness about something that's happened in the past. Or they are worried about the future and they freak out about things that are going to happen or, you know, trying to get there. When I have this, I'll be happy. When I'm that successful, I'll be happy. When I'm with that person, then I'll be happy. And they're so consumed with either the past or the future that nobody is present in the now. And the now, this moment now, is the only thing that's real. Because something that has happened in the past isn't real anymore. You'll never get it back. You'll never change it. You'll never be there to see it again. And all the things in the future that you think are happen, that will happen, are not real because they're not there yet. The only thing we have is now. So a big part of the power of now is understanding, understanding the, the voice, those voices in your head are fixated on past and future. When you can switch them off, you can be present in the now and enjoy the moments that are now. And that's when you can be happy. So read those books. Please read books on mindset, motivational books. Listen to motivational speakers who talk about present time awareness um, and things like that. That helps. Meditation really helps. Um, I can't seem to do it on my own if I just sit there on my own but um there's organizations and classes that you can go to where you have group meditations and if I'm if I go somewhere and sit with people then the chances are I'll actually try it and do it but every time I've left a meditation session I just come out feeling really calm and really aware and just a lot happier because what it does is it gets you out of that ego chatty bullshit and it brings you back to where you are focusing on one one simple thing. Meditation is great. Exercise. Um, this is where I'm, this is where I'm, I'm a bit lazy. I'm stupid because, um, after three years of like personal development and spending a lot of time working on myself, I find I get to these places of just real happiness where things are going very well in my life. I feel very content. I'm very happy. And so I stop all the reading, all of the exercise, all of the meditation, I just stop because I feel great. And then a few months later, I feel shit again. And I'm like, why do I feel bad? It's because I stopped doing the work. You will only be as successful as you are developing yourself as a person. So that basically means that if you just stop working on yourself, you'll stop growing in whatever field that it is that you're trying to improve on. Um, so keep reading basically. Um, so exercise, I slack on this sometimes, um, but things like yoga are fantastic because it's also not only it's good physically, it's also very good emotionally, um, and spiritually and mentally, but any kind of exercise is good. We need to be exercising more. Uh, what else for depression? What you eat. You are what you eat. If you are putting shit and poison because a lot of the food honestly a lot of the food that I think is in the supermarkets is poison a lot of the meat that you find in shelves is pumped with hormones and chemicals a lot of products you put on your skin is pumped with chemicals so if you're poisoning yourself if you consume bad things you will feel terrible so look at your diet what are you putting in your body and on your body um don't shut down don't shut down don't shut yourself off from the world. I would do that. I mean, sometimes I'd need to because I just didn't have. I just didn't have the energy. I just did not have the energy to go and put that fake smile on my face and go and be fine with everybody. And so I would just shut myself off for a while and not want to talk to anybody and just be really, really low. If you need to do that for a bit, fine. But that's not going to make it better. You need to be around people. Reach out to people. There are people that will help and do want to help. Um, even if you don't know them. Because I just remember thinking, I've got no friends, nobody cares about me. Actually, there were plenty of people that did care, but I didn't know that at the time. Um, but there are people who will want to help. Um, so reach out, 
Another huge factor, I think, um, is finding, finding your purpose. Finding something that you are happy about, that you are excited about, that you want to be doing. For example, as an actor, not getting anywhere was one of the things that really made me feel low. And to, I didn't realize this at the time, but to counteract that, I just needed to be actively doing more. Not just because I was trying to make money out of it, but because I love it, because it's the passion, it's because what it's what I want to be doing. And recently I've started doing that again a lot, just throwing myself into my acting classes. And, you know, as soon as I get auditions, I'm working on them straight away. And, you know, trying to do things with friends and just being involved in other people's projects, just for the sake of doing it. Like, if you do something that you love, if you're doing something that you love, you'll be a lot more happier. So just do it. Like, if you're a singer and you haven't sung for months, what are you doing? You're a singer. And if you're an actor that hasn't acted in a really long time, you need to act. Like, that's your calling. You need to be doing it. So whatever it is that you is your purpose, I'm talking in terms of, like, creatives, because I'm a, I'm a creative person, an actor, an artist, whatever. I don't know how creative I am. But, um... Whatever is your thing, your calling, your thing that you love doing, do it. Because if you don't do it, you're going to feel shit. Okay, this one is another big one. It's understanding the difference between relative and absolute happiness, which comes from some Buddhist philosophies that I love. And that is that basically, true absolute happiness comes from within. It doesn't come from anything else. Um, And a lot of us think that that relative, that external happiness that once I have this job or once I have this type of lifestyle or when I'm with that person or when when all these things happen, then I'll be happy. Well, the problem is with relative happiness, even somebody who we see who may have it all, you know, the richest millionaires that, you know, fly around the world and have all these private jets and have the most amazing lifestyle and these playboys that sleep with all of these amazing models, those people two are unhappy. Not all of them, I'm sure some of them are just very happy, but some of them are not very happy. So it's realizing that relative happiness, having things, having a certain lifestyle does not guarantee you happiness because you might get there, as a lot of people do, and still feel bad, which is why there are celebrities who take their lives often and why rich people are some of the most depressed people in the world. Okay, that's relative happiness. Absolute happiness comes from within, Um, and it is, for me, I find it now, I get it now and again, Um, it's Buddhahood, that's what we call it in Buddhism, it's like kind of when you've reached that state of enlightenment type of thing, and it's finding the happiness within you and within what you have, Um, it's kind of cool. It's that state of being where you're at peace with yourself and that comes a lot from um, acceptance, accepting what is and not resisting everything that's happening to you and just allowing things to flow through and not fight everything. Um, So anyway, absolute happiness comes from within. (laughs) There's so many topics that I'm going to do spin-off videos for, but think about that for a second. Um, gratitude is immensely important. Uh, when I was in the depths of my depression, I couldn't be grateful for anything. I honestly knew that it was important, but I just, I would think about it and I was like, what have I got to be grateful for? I'm, I, I've got my health, I suppose. That was my attitude towards it. I've got family. I've got, you know, I'm all right looking. I've, you know, I'm a, I'm a decent actor. That was all the things. And I said it, I had that kind of resentment towards it. So silly. Now, um, I can, I am grateful for everything, everything, no matter how small, um, no matter how small, um, and to just, just, just try and start looking at all of the things that you have, even the things that are seemingly bad and find something to be grateful for in it, that will really cheer you up. Okay, I'm going to stop now, um, but the purpose of this video was to really just bring to light some ideas um, of things that might help cheer you up. Um, It's a starting point and it's basically to help you know that one, you're not alone, 
to it, this too shall pass. As with everything, good or bad, this shall pass. Um, and it's realizing that you are more precious, your life is more precious than all the jewels in the universe. Every single valuable thing in the universe, your life is more precious than that. And I know you might not feel it, but it is. The fact that you are alive is a miracle and you should have the best a life in the world. So I'm going to list some videos and I'm going to list some things that, you know, might be help, helpful in the comments section. And um, feel free to share this with anybody that you know who might be feeling low. And um, I hope it helps. Thank you. Bye.